Outside Ourselves listeners, a quick announcement before we get to today's show. This summer, the 1517 Podcast Network is celebrating its fifth anniversary. And you may or may not know this, but we actually have 19 shows across the network that cover everything from theological topics to the Christian life to Christian history. You name it, we probably have it. We bring you all of this content completely free. Our content is never behind a paywall, and it's always easily accessible. And we're able to do this, of course, because of the financial support of listeners like you. This month in June, we actually have a special fundraiser specifically for the 1517 Podcast Network. Our goal is to raise $50,000, and we would love if you could consider being a part of this effort. To learn more, please go to the first link in the show notes. It should say Support 1517 Podcasts. There, you can set up either a one-time donation, a recurring donation, whatever makes most sense for you right now would be greatly appreciated. I don't take your support lightly. I feel so honored that I get to bring you these interviews every other week. So thank you so much for considering giving and for your continued support of the 1517 Podcast Network. Welcome to Outside Ourselves, a show with conversations that remind us faith isn't something we do, it's something we receive. I'm Kelsey Clumbera. Outside Ourselves is a 1517 podcast. To learn more about all of our podcasts and all of our shows, please go to 1517.org forward slash podcasts. Today I'm chatting with my new friend, writer and speaker, poet and podcaster, Tanner Olson. Tanner's probably most well known for his written poetry and his spoken word work. He has been writing for about 10 years and sharing poetry and prose around the idea of hope centered in Christ. Today we have a conversation about the different ways we can communicate the same gospel message and the importance that poetry plays in in that um, and the importance that creativity plays in that. Tanner reminds us that sometimes the simplest ways of sharing hope are the easiest ways to turn people's ears to hear the message of Jesus. As always, enjoy today's show. Hey, Tanner. <laughs> Hi, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> we should tell people this is our third intro to do, yeah. but we're just going to go great. with it. It's fine. This yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the show. So glad. So glad you're here. <laughs> I, to, I mean, I say this a lot of times, but I really am just happy to be here. Uh, I've been following the podcast and watching the podcast kind of from a distance with all the social media stuff. And I, every time I see a post, I'm like, oh, she had that guest on. I want to be a guest one day. And then the email came are. into my inbox and I'm here now. And I feel like I've made it as an artist. Man, that is a high compliment for me. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what to what to say. I think you should aim maybe a little bit higher, but nope. I'm, I'm, I will take nope. that compliment. I will take it. This is it. <laughs> this is it for me. This is this great. high achievement. You can retire. No, I, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, numbers <laughs> in my bank account would disagree with yeah. you. Uh, but no, I, I really do enjoy your, your podcast and, and the conversations Thank that you've you. had. It's, uh, so it's fun. It's fun to be here and to be able to talk about whatever we're going to talk about, which we'll find out soon. Yeah, we will both find out ex- <laughs> very soon. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm so excited you're here. Uh, we met pretty recently at the Mockingbird Conference in New York and um, got to hang out a little bit and I've been following your work too for a little while and really love what you're doing. So um, excited to ch- <laughs> to chat with you. Do you want to kind of tell us a little bit about um, what you what you do because it's interesting yeah. and you are actually for this show um, you're in a little bit of a different field. So I'm I'm excited that you're here and just even just to learn about more about your work and what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, when somebody asks me, you know, what do I do? I think the, the best answer I can give them is that I'm a, like, I'm an artist, I'm a creative. So I'm an, I'm an author. I have four books of poetry and writings out. Um, I'm a, I'm a poet. So I, 
travel around and I do evenings of poetry and storytelling. And it's more exciting than what it kind of sounds like just there. But it's like stand up comedy mixed with stories yeah. and then, you know, poetic thoughts and, 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 and poems. Um, and then I put a lot of things on the internet most days. Um, I'll, I'll speak, I'll deliver messages of, of hope and, um, and then I also have a podcast and I don't know when you, when you're an artist or creative, it's like you do five or six different things. Uh, but the main thing that I like to do is I just like to write. And the purpose of my writing is to just to spread hope, to encourage people to keep going um, and to remind, remind others that, you know, like yeah, everything is, is, is going to be okay. It may not feel like yeah. it, uh, but everything is going to be okay. Yeah. Have you always kind of had an interest in writing? Like, did you grow up with that? interest or is that something that came later? It it was one of those like hidden things that I liked as yeah. as I grew up. Like I my my thing growing up was basketball. Like I loved I still love basketball. Um I grew up in Orlando in the nineties. Uh so if for any of your listeners out there who are NBA fans, that was like the Shaq and Penny era. Mm. And so I grew up with, you know, following the Orlando Magic and then wanting to play in the NBA. And so I played basketball all throughout childhood. But then I discovered pop punk music when I was like in middle school, uh, when I had okay. my angsty phase, but I never grew out of my yeah. angsty phase. Like I'm still very much in it. Um, but like I discovered bands like Newfound Glory and Blink 182 and Yellow Card and the starting line, like all these, these bands and, and, and I listened to them and their lyrics just like connected with me. Like I, they, they unlock something inside of me. And so I thought, okay, maybe I won't be a basketball player. Maybe I'll be in a band, but I can't sing, can't play music. Like my brain just <laughs> does not work that way. My mouth does not deliver beautiful sounding words, uh, with, a, with when I sing, uh, but I loved the lyrics. And so then I started writing lyrics, which eventually became poems. And I never really told anybody about that. My favorite class was always English. I just liked words and how they, you know, made you feel and could, could, could change you and change your perspective. And then kind of throughout high school and college, I just kind of kept writing. And then the internet was really wasn't really going away. Like it, like it was here to stay. Yeah, and so I here. started a blog. I started a blog. Like I was one of those people who started a blog, you know, like you, did you ever have a blog? Yeah. Like you're, oh, you know, yeah. like all Millions. my, all my friends, all my friends started blogs, every single one, mm -hmm. all, we're, we're going to start a blog. And so, but I kept doing it. Like I was the only one who like, was just like, well, I'm just going to keep doing this thing. Um, and so I've been at it for, for 10 years now of, of writing oh, and wow. creating and, and sharing words. So yeah, I started in 2013. I graduated college in 2012 and then released stuff in 2013 and have just kind of been rolling ever since then. Okay. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Did you read much poetry growing up? Because I feel that's interesting to hear that your connection or your kind of your passion grew out of music and lyrics. Um, yeah. Did you, were you into reading poetry at all or not as much? <laughs> I was a bad student. Kelsey, I was a really <laughs> bad student. Uh, I thought that school was about making jokes and entertaining people. It took me years to realize that school was about learning. Like I just never, I was like, well, just these tests are just things that we have to do so that we can keep entertaining other people. Like I thought this was like, we're just where kids go because parents are working. Like we'll go here. This is where they will hold us. And like, we'll just tell them about numbers and old things that happen in the world. Uh, I never really realized like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to like learn and, and dig deeper into things. Um, so I, I, my way of, of absorbing information has always been like through experience and, and relationship. And so I remember going and seeing, uh, I went to a concert and opening up was this uh, poet named Anis Mojgani. Um, and he is this brilliant poet and he just walked out onto the stage and just delivered this poem titled Shake the Dust. Mm. It was absolutely beautiful. And I was like standing there and I was like, oh my goodness, you can do that as a job? Like you can, <laughs> you can, you can write words and then share them with people and they'll like that. And it, and it, it'll, it'll, it will matter to somebody. That was the big thing yeah. for me. It was like, it, it, it'll matter to somebody. It won't be like empty. It won't be, um, it won't be showy. It won't be anything grand or special. I'm a very simple person. And so seeing a niece deliver a poem, that's when everything for me was like, oh, so you can do that with words. Yeah. And I never really got into like, studying poetry. I am yeah. not like a, I wouldn't say I'm a student of like scholarly poetry, but I'm more of like a student of like how people are feeling 
the things that they're trying to navigate in their own life? And then what is it, what true and honest words do they need to hear? Like, yeah. that's what I pay more attention to. And so I never like studied poetry right. in, in college. Yeah. In college, I took a creative writing class and I got a C because the professor didn't like my work. <laughs> and I was like, I must have been too creative for him. I don't know. Uh, but it was just like, it. I, yeah, that must have been it. C for creativity. And yeah, <laughs> I, I, school wasn't my thing, but like wanting to um, offer somebody something honest and true and hopeful has always kind of been my more my speed. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I I ask because I have always, you know, I'm a writer. I mm-hmm. love I love reading. I love um, books. I I I'm like on the opposite scale. I thought school yeah. was all about getting, you know, the best grade, and then I realized like no one cares about that at all. <laughs> like later, so yeah, I'm still kind of dealing with that, you know. But um, yeah. it's fine. Uh, so anyway, I. <laughs> I, I love words kind of from a different angle, but I have always really struggled with reading poetry. Like I, mm-hmm. um, there's something about it that just doesn't connect with me. Um, mm-hmm. but I feel like what you do, you know, so much of your work is spoken. You're, mm-hmm. you know, on online, your website and your social media is written to speak. Um, and so, yeah, the idea that you're, writing something, but you're speaking it is very inherent to kind of your work. Um, Mm -hmm. What do you, what have you found to be the importance of that? Like the spoken word versus the, the written word? Cause that's actually, you know, that can get like a, become like a very academic debate in and of Mm -hmm. itself, but it's also, there's so much practicality to it. So I'm interested kind of your opinion on that. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would say that there are a lot of people out there who wouldn't call me a poet. They would call me a writer who, because my poetry is, I mean, like what it's words that rhyme and kind of tell a story, but don't do it in the same way that like an article does. And so I always just called it poetry. And I've had people say, well, it's not technically poetry. It's, it's prose or it's just like spoken word. And it's like, I don't, I don't need to get into the specifics of that. But uh, for me, like, it's just like, what when I sit down, this is kind of what what comes out, um, mm. and then as I'm writing it, I want to speak it out loud. And if it if I and then that's part of the editing process. So I write it and then I speak it, and then that helps me kind of edit and say, okay, well, this doesn't need to be there. I need to move this around. There needs to be a different word that kind of lines up with 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 the line the, the line above it. Uh, but then when you hear it, uh, it's it's just it just changes everything. Like where, where, where somebody pauses, where somebody like, uh, puts an, an inflection or, or whatever it is. Um, one of my classes in, in college, we were, we were studying the New Testament as a New Testament class. And our professor, Professor Pavlo was his name. He had this, um, like teaching example, uh, when reading scripture of like, well, how, how do you think that it was spoken? How do you think that it was said? Um, and so we were, you know, read to the gospels and, and when Jesus would say something and, and his example was, and I don't remember a lot of things from school. So this is huge for me that I'm remembering this, <laughs> but, but it was, his example was Pat likes you, Pat likes you. And he's like, well, how, how many different ways can you say Pat likes you? Like, where can you put the, you know, can it be like Pat likes you or Pat likes you or Pat likes you, you know, all these different things. And so it's like a, a, a story can be told really well with how it is spoken. And I think mm. with poetry is kind of the same way, like it's going to make you feel something different. Your mind's going to go somewhere else based upon how it's read. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that I hear at almost every single show I do was, um, I, I like your books, but I want you to read them to me. Like, I want to hear oh, you. Really? Read them. I want you to like there, you know, people will make the creepy joke, which I really love. Like, how much can I pay you to come read to me at night? And I was like, well, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of money. Uh, (laughs) But like, I mean, it it makes sense to me because like, that's one of the heart, like, you know, I love Mary Oliver. I love Wendell Berry. I love some of these like really great, uh, the Psalms, but like David didn't have a podcast, you know, so I can't hear him read them. And I would love yeah. to have heard him like cry through some, well, not cry. That'd be a lot for me to handle, but like to like read <laughs> through some of these, these Psalms, you know, uh, it just, it just changes it. Uh, but one of the reasons why I like to, and I know I'm rambling, but one of the reasons why no. I like to, you know, put these in books is like, I want to, I want to know where you pause when you read it. 
Like I want to yeah. know what line, what line you circle or what stands out to you or which one were you just like, this was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. You know? Um, cause it's, you know, hearing it spoken, you're hearing it as the author intends or the, or the speaker intends if they, if they weren't the one that, uh, wrote it, but there is some strength to, I hear what you're saying, like reading something because you, then your imagination comes into play where you're kind of trying to figure mm -hmm. out how does this impact me? Maybe you're also, you know, looking at context if it's something like scripture or a book, but, um, yeah. that's really interesting. I think it's important to kind of think through those things and think about how the difference between how things hit us. Cause I think that, that there is a difference for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I would do this with when I would read the Bible, like when I, when I sit and try to have quiet time, I'm so bad at quiet time at whoever invented quiet time. That was good for them. But like, I need, yeah. I need a little bit of loud time. Like I need to hear <laughs> like what's going on. And like, so when I read scripture, like it's helpful for me to read it out loud because then yeah. I can like see and hear and not just like see and then think. And I think, you know, right. I think poetry is the same way too, of like, let, let there be like, add another element to it. Sure. Like you can read it by yourself, but like, if it's read to you, then, then I think that's when you can decide if you like it or if you don't like it, you know, Yeah. <laughs> you know, put a little emotion behind it, put a little heart behind it, put a person behind it and it's going to change everything for you. Where would you say you, you find inspiration? You kind of mentioned at the beginning what you like to write about. Um, but where would you say most of your, like your subject matter comes from? And then like, what, what inspires you when you sit down mm -hmm. to write? Yeah, it, I think it kind of, it changes through the seasons. Um, a yeah. lot of it is kind of like, what, what, you know, it, it, what am I going through? What are the questions I'm asking? What are, what are the hurts that I am navigating? Um, the uncertainties and then how how am I just navigating the world in general? So I'll write about that. But then then it's like, well, how are my neighbors and my friends like? What are they going through? What mm. can I write that would feel like a like a a little handwritten note to them that'll bring them comfort, that'll bring them hope? Um, those those are a couple of places. You know, when I, when I talk to to students about writing and being a writer, a lot of them will ask, you know, like where do you get your inspiration from? And, and what I've been saying recently is like as as a writer. I am constantly um, investigating the world. Hmm. Like I am, I am looking for where where stories are happening, where things are taking place, where um, where questions are being asked, where hurts are being felt, or where there's like this like absence of of hope. Um, and then like, how can I write about those things? Um, or like, you know, like I'm I'm speaking at like a, a high school conference in a couple of weeks, and I wanted to write a poem for them, like something. So it's like thinking through life through the lens of a high school student, which is terribly scary. Um, and I don't want to do it again, but like, <laughs> yeah, I did it once. I, I did, I did high school and I did it again, you but did like it. thinking it, yeah, barely, but we got through it. Um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, how do I put myself in their shoes and then ask the questions or even this, like, you know, so it's like trying to scoot around the table and look at things from a different angle. Um, yeah. this has always been helpful. Uh, and then I added this thing to my website called ask me anything and people can anonymously send me questions or writing prompts or things that they just kind of like, Hey, I'm thinking about this. Can you write about it? Uh, and that's been helpful because there are days where I wake up and I have zero inspiration. I don't right. know what to do. And so it's like to give me a little bit of put a little gas in the tank of like, it'd be helpful if you wrote about this, then I can do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I think that's definitely a huge, um, part of writing and writing well is thinking about stuff from different perspectives and being curious about the world. Like that's, we mm -hmm. don't have very much of that these days, unfortunately. Um, and so when yeah. you see someone and when you see writing that is curious and because with cur curiosity comes compassion, right? Like an empathy a lot of the, a lot of the time. Um, mm -hmm. I think it stands out. So. And the, the more, the more I write, the more that I just realize, I don't know. I think when I sit down to write, I'm I'm almost like looking for answers. But what the conclusion that I come back to is, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna know the answers. But I have the answers that I need to keep going. And like for me, it is like I know what Jesus has done. Like it's the whole like you know if 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 Jesus didn't raise 
be, you know, raised from the dead, then what? But he did. So I can rest in that. And so a lot of the things that I try to write now, it kind of, it always kind of gets back to this place of hope is real and everything's going to be okay. So I feel like a broken record sometimes when I write, because I feel like I'm writing about the same thing over and over again, but y'all have made a whole organization about it. So, you know, Christ has risen from the dead. We'll hold on to that, you know, like, you know, we can live in that, like hold fast to that. So, and it's, and it's true. Like, so, but I, I want to write a, I want to write more about everything else surrounding that, you know, that kind of gets back to, to, to the fact that like, yes, life is heavy and hard and difficult. And I don't have all the answers for this or that or the future things, but like, I do know that Jesus woke up and that he's coming back and I know that everything's going to be okay. And I don't know about this issue. I don't know about that issue. I know what the Bible says about this. And that's hard for me some days, but the Bible says that. But I also know that the Bible says that Jesus woke up. And so therefore I have hope, you know? So it's just, yeah. it's just all kind of like, it's just a lot. Um, it's a lot to be a human being. And it's a lot to be a human being in a world where there's a lot of information and yeah, a lot of questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, um, that's, that's something I think I, we, we live in a time where certainty is definitely a thing that people are wary of um, for a lot of good reasons. I think, mm -hmm. you know, for, for many reasons and questions are really, really important, but there is something to the fact that if you have an, a sure anchor, like, Jesus, you know, hopefully that's, and you know, that's we would both one. say, hopefully yeah. that's, yeah, <laughs> that's the one top, you're, top, you're anchored to <laughs> top, top, top three anchor for me, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a good day, for those you, top one for those you, on a bad yeah, day, yeah. <laughs> top five. <laughs> I was going to say for those of you who think I'm joking, like he's, he's number one, but like, okay, just, yeah. just so we know he's number one. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Um, I had to. <laughs> you never know. P people can take it out of context. Like, this guy, this guy's not about that. No, I'm very much about that. Just also wanted to make a joke. So yeah, <laughs> I there is something to that being to to Jesus being certain, and not in the sense that like um, he's going to give you all the answers, but the things that he said he did, those promises mm -hmm. being true. Which is, I you know, I I'm a broken record. I feel like I say that all the time on this this podcast. That's yeah. That's comforting and it frees you to ask questions and it frees you to um, to not mm -hmm. be sure all the time about some of some of the big scary stuff as well. Um, I think if you have that, then then it's helpful. I found it to be helpful at least. Yeah, I, I wrote the other day. I was writing and I don't I don't know what I did with it, but I, I was I, I wrote like I I know how the story began. I know how the story ends. I just don't know everything in between. Hmm. Like, like I got to let there be light. There was light. Jesus rose from the dead. He will come back again. Everything kind of in between the coming, the, the beginning and the coming back. I don't know what's going on. I'm just happy yeah. to be here. You know, <laughs> like I just trying to figure it out. Um, but, and, and I think that we can kind of, obsess over that of like, I don't know. I don't know. I know. And I think that's one of the reasons why I became a writer is because I don't know. Like I have a mm. lot of, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of anxieties. I'm just a human being. Um, but writing for me has become very therapeutic. And thankfully uh, my job is therapeutic for the most part, where I get to kind of write through the questions and the unknowns and the doubts and the, the things that are happening in the world. And then I get to remind myself and then the reader as well that everything is going to be okay. Let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about, um, cause you've mentioned it a few times already, the fact that you write a lot about hope specifically, mm -hmm. like that's a big theme, if not like the biggest theme in your mm -hmm. writing, maybe, um, where, where have you found that word practically to be helpful for you? Like, and, and why do you think it comes up over and over again in your writing? Yeah. Um, well, so for me, like to break it down, like hope, I think is like, it's the full assurance that God is, is with me in this. Like mm -hmm. he's not, he is, he is present. He is here. And, uh, and, and like we said, you know, like we know how the story ends. So like that there's, there's my hope. But, you know, I think back, like when I first started writing it, it was really, it was right after I had been 
fired from my first job out of college. Um, and then, you know, when you, when you lose a job, you, you, for better or worse, you lose part of your identity, then you lose your paycheck and your health insurance, which is pretty important, by the way. Um, and you, you kind of lose all of these things. And so you're left just kind of free falling. And so for me, like, that's when I really started writing about hope where it's, you know, taking all the, all the, the jumbled up things inside of me, but anchoring that to like the certainty of hope. And I just don't think mm. I've ever, I just haven't stopped writing about it. I just, and, and then as, as I've continued to go on and, and grow as a, as a writer and as a person and go in and out of seasons of things, like I need to hear the word hope as much as the person to my left and right does as well. You know, and then is, and then you start meeting more people and more people find your writing and your work. And they're like, I needed to hear that. You know, yeah. I had one of the, the, one of the best compliments I ever got from somebody was a, is a, is a, someone who found me on Instagram and he was like, since following your writing, I started using the word hope more in my life. Hmm. So, okay. All right. Then I guess this is, I guess this matters. I guess this is important uh, because sometimes we get, you know, we get our heads down so far that we just kind of don't see what the, the good that's happening around us or the good that's waiting for us at the end of it all. Yeah. Yeah. What would you, I, I agree with you. I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here. What oh, would you now say I'm to, sweaty. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, do we, need to, we can break. We can break. I don't, um, I don't do conflict. I don't do conflict. <laughs> what would you say to, I'm, I'm just plowing forward. I'm yeah. just going to move ahead. All right. Go for um, it. Go for it. P, I think that sometimes the critique, uh, really, especially to Christians is like this idea that everything's going to be okay. You know, like don't sweat it is kind of like a cop out. Um, mm -hmm. like it doesn't, it allows us to not really d address what's happening, whether it's, you know, our own suffering or pain or, or conflict or sin, um, either around us or in us. What would you say mm -hmm. to that? Like, how do you think that those, you can have hope and you can give people hope for what's to come while still living in the tension of like, the reality of whatever pain or suffering oh, yeah. having in the moment. How do we kind of handle oh. both of those? Well, yeah, I, I feel like I can go like in nine different directions and I don't feel you playing devil's advocate. This is, this is completely part of it because I, yeah. most days when I write and I find myself getting to that part where I'm writing about hope again, or that everything is going to be okay. I, I, I sometimes want to pick up my laptop and throw it Yeah, because it's not like life is heavy. It is hard. There are things that I'm going through, things that you're going through, things the listeners going through that they don't want to talk about, that they don't want to share, that they don't want to be going through, right? Like they just yeah. like, they don't want that part to be part of their life or they don't want that past to be their past. There are things that mm. we don't want to talk about. There are things that we don't want to share. And in those moments, I think like, think about this in a, in a couple of different ways, right? I think like there's always this little asterisk above us. And if you look down at the bottom of the page, it still says everything is going to be okay, but yeah. I don't need to hear it. Mm -hmm. I don't always need to hear it. And hearing that is not always helpful. What I, what I need to hear sometimes is like, I need someone to say that sucks or I hate that for you. Or they don't need to say anything at all. Cause sometimes the last thing that I need to be reminded of is the thing that I know very, very well. The thing that mm -hmm. I know very well is that he's coming back and everything is going to be okay. But right now, He's not here right now. Well, I mean, he is, but he's not coming back like right now. And like, I still have to deal with this in this, in this, in this, I have to let this dream die. I have to figure out what to say to this person, you know, all these different examples that we can give, but like always at the end of the sentence, it's either going to be in bold letters or in parentheses or in small text, but it's always going to say everything is going to be okay. Um, yeah. And sometimes I, and, and like I said, like I sometimes hate when that's what I get to at the mm. end of a writing because there are a lot of times where I just want to just sit, sit with it. Hmm. And sometimes you can, but like, even if I don't write it on the, on the page, like it's still gonna, it's still gonna show up somewhere. So. No, I think that's helpful thinking about it being the underwritten message, whether it's said, mm -hmm. however, or however explicitly or implicitly it's mm -hmm. implied in the way that we handle conversations. And I think too, trusting like you know there's obviously uh 
better ways to say it to someone in the middle of pain and suffering than not. And I think we need to pay very close attention to that. But knowing like the Holy Spirit is going to give people ears to hear what they need to hear in the moment. Mm -hmm. So kind of saying, yeah. being able to say both, like say, this is really painful and bad and I'm sorry, like you were saying, yeah. as well as like the message of, of hope that we have in Christ and, and not forgetting one or the other. Yeah. So sometimes people will, will come up to me after events and they'll say like, Hey, here's the situation in my house. What do you, what's something that you've written that this person might need to hear? Mm. And I would say, maybe none of this stuff right now, <laughs> you know, yeah. like maybe, yeah. maybe I don't know where they're at, but like, maybe what they need to hear is that like, this is just, I hate this for you. Like maybe mm. that's what they need to hear because they might open up when they open up my books, like you're going to find something hopeful, but you're also going to find something honest. Like I don't, I don't ever want to write something that just kind of feels super fluffy. Now you can take things like one line and pull it out and it will feel very fluffy. But if the lines leading up to it are just all fluff, like then I'm not writing anything that's, that's not really, I don't know. I don't want to write signs for Hobby Lobby. No offense. Great stuff. 40% <laughs> 40, 40 off. But like, I, I, I want to write something that's like, that does not ignore the darkness. Like I want us to look at the darkness and say, there's still light. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like you get a lot of, um, I'm, I'm curious cause you do so many events, like what are kind of the conversations that you have with people after those? Do they, do you end up kind of pastoring people? Like, do they get pretty personal or, um, I don't know what, what is that experience? Like, I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. I, you know, so I'll, I'll say this. I, uh, when I was in college, I, I thought I was going to be a pastor. Okay. Well, let me tell you, when you go to a, a small college, a small Christian college, and there's not as many guys there, and you are a guy that's there, they'll probably say, hey, you ever thought about being a pastor? And I have. <laughs> I had thought about being a, being a pastor. Um, I love walking alongside people and shepherding them and saying, I don't have all the answers, but I yeah. think I have a few. Um, and I think being a poet, there's this... Like I get to do that in different ways. Mm. I get to write honest words of love and speak them into people's lives. I get to say like, I don't have all the answers, uh, but I know, I know of, of a greater hope. Um, I, I would never call myself a pastor because I, I don't people get mad at me because I'm not one, but yeah. the work that I get to do as a writer, you get to help shepherd people and lead people and care for people in, in different ways than a traditional pastor has the opportunity to do so. When, when people come to events and they come up to me afterwards, I hear every story that a priest hears in confession. Yeah. I hear every, I've, I've gotten to hear every part of parts of people's lives that not other people, other people have not gotten to hear. I have received emails anonymously from people. Um, I have a, a little space on my website where people can ask me anything or share anything anonymously. And recently people have just been using it as a, as a safe place to confess things and to share what's happening in their lives and the struggles that they've gotten to go through. Um, so it is a, it's not when, when I tell people that I'm an author, poet, and speaker, I also get to play the role of a listener um, mm. in a lot of people's lives um, and then respond to those things in very um, like broad ways, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I hear, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, suicide attempts and depression and anxiety and, you know, loss and pain and questions. You know, one of the most recent questions I, I, I received was, you know, you know, what would you say to somebody who went to seminary and now as they're graduating wonders if everything is still true, hmm. you know? So it's like all these, all these different things. But I think when, when you, um, when you kind of set yourself up and say, I don't have all the answers that disarms a lot of people. When you say, I'm just trying to figure it out. People are like, Hey, this guy, he's not going to tell me how to live his life, live my life or, you know, I'm, cause I, I'm not, cause I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll, I'll probably listen and I'll, I'll give what I can, you know? I think there's a need for that. I think there's a need for, you know, obviously the pastor position, but like so, people like you that are able to approach there. So there's, um, 
this little essay that C.S. Lewis wrote called Meditations on the Tool Shed. I don't know if it's mm. like super. I've heard of it. I don't know if. Okay. Yeah. He talks yeah. about this, the difference between um, approaching something directly and then approaching something from the side. He's talking basically about knowledge. So he says like knowledge that comes yeah. alongside something or knowledge that comes directly at it. And he's arguing against like specifically the fact that uh, religion in the modern era is only seen as, or the the only credible sources for religion in the modern era, era are people that come directly at it, but don't really have it. Like they're not actually religious people. Mm. So he's critiquing that. But I think it's a helpful, I think that metaphor is so helpful for us, with, even within Christianity, to think about like the different approaches we take with people and yeah. with um, the gospel. Like you can either go directly at something, you can speak directly at it. And that's, that's good sometimes, but I, I feel like poetry and a lot of what you're doing is looking at something from the side, like going alongside. Wow. And Lewis describes that as kind of like, um, being in knowing something from the inside, like you've, you're talking about experience and you're talking about the thing because you're in it, you're not outside mm -hmm. of it, viewing it objectively i don't know do you does that do you feel like that makes sense it does it does and like i think one of the the benefits to being a poet is no one is like that's my poet people will be like that's my pastor <laughs> like i follow yeah, no one's like that's, that's like that's my poet like no one says that yeah. <laughs> but it's like this is this is this is somebody who was like spoken something honest or hopeful that i needed to hear into the world and it helped me take that next step forward um, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, like coming at it from this different, this different angle or this different point of view, um, which it's kind of easy to do because like when you are in, it depends on like what your role is. Right. And so if like my role as a, if I, if my role was a pastor, I would probably face it like head on, but because mm -hmm. I get to be a poet, like I get to kind of stand off to the side and come at it a little bit from like this angle, like, like, you know, from like a, a, a disciple's point of view, who's not in the story, but is like kind of riding off to the side, you know, like that's kind of what I see myself doing is offering something that can, you know, help you take the next step forward, but it's not like in your face, you know, yeah. it's not like, and you need the, and you need the, in your face. Right. But also like on Tuesday afternoon, when life begins to creep in and you open up your phone, or you check your email and there's going to be something like reminding you that everything is going to be okay. Even though it's not, everything is going to be okay. Yeah. I think there's, there's something meaningful in that. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, like life just seems to be getting more and more difficult for more and more people. And so these little reminders to, to, to keep trusting, to keep believing, to keep remembering, to keep going. Like it, I, I think there's, there's, a, there's a space for it. And y'all do that really well at like at 15, 17, like our friends at Mockingbird do that really well. Yeah. Just these reminders of grace, these, these reminders of mercy, the reminders of hope. Um, Cause we need it. We yeah. need all the reminders that we can get. Not like that, like weigh us down, but that uh, like kind of free us. What's interesting specifically about, you know, if we're talking about 15, 17 and Mockingbird, I think we do that in, different but very complementary ways like i feel like mockingbird yep. is more of the alongside a little bit more like um reminders even reminders to people that maybe aren't super familiar with christian language or have kind of mm -hmm. walked away from the the church whereas 1517 it's a little bit more direct and specific like it's a little bit more like we're going to talk mm -hmm. about uh, you know um the solution in Christ and what exactly like how that that works out and like you're saying i think both are so necessary both are going to hit people at different times and in different ways depending on circumstance and personality and so i love i love figuring you know finding people that do both of those in in different ways and um yeah i think I think both are necessary. We're now just becoming an echo chamber of each other, but that's fine. Oh, <laughs> that's great. No. And, that's, and that's exactly what a podcast is. So I think we're nailing yeah. it. <laughs> a plus. Five, yeah. stars. A podcast, Five stars. A podcast is really just two people talking over each other, saying the same things differently, which is great. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Is there is there anything I we, we've kind of talked about maybe we've touched on this already, but like what do you feel like connects the most with people about the the writing that you do? Like what do you get the the most feedback on? Is it a specific subject matter or um I don't know, like maybe one specific poem that you've written or something. Yeah, there's there's a couple of things that like uh, I I would say it's it's the the poems that uh, okay I don't know what childhood like was like for you, but for me when I would wake up in the morning, my mom was my mom is the best, and she would come in and she would like gently rub my back, and that's how I would yeah. wake up. And those are the kind of poems that tend to resonate with the most people. Where it's nothing like you don't push anything on them. You're not saying you have all the answers. You're just kind of saying like, "Hey, I'm I'm here with you." It's it's, but it's time to keep going. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. I, I would say like, I would say that's, but that's what kind of connects with the most people. And then if I if I actually make a funny joke on the internet, people are like, "Oh, that's good. We should do you know, <laughs> that." It's it's always hard though. Like the, when you when you like putting things out onto social media. Uh, I, I often have to stop looking at it and stop looking at the numbers and what is what like what do people like what don't they like yeah. because the way that the internet the way that the internet works now is like they're just not going to see everything like mm. I've had the I had one post on on Instagram go viral last summer but it was like the third time I had posted it so mm. like it just depends on on how people see it and and then when they see it and then numbers are such a liar online because a lot of it is just bots anyways. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really hard, but I will say that when I am honest, my inbox is filled with, with honest responses. Hmm. Now, when I say this is, this is hard for me, or this is what I'm wondering about, people will respond and say, this is what's hard for me. And this is what I'm wondering about too. It's just the whole idea of like vulnerability breeds vulnerability. Honesty leads to more honesty. Um, so those, I think those, so when I write poems in, 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 you know, short, like pieces of prose like that, that's when I get the, that's when I get good responses. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know. There's just something about being honest and, uh, and, and being hopeful, but holding them together, um, yeah. loosely, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. The internet, the internet is a wild place. Uh, but, uh, I've gotten to it meet some, just, I mean, some, some really incredible people, um, from all over the world because of it. So I'm, I'm yeah. super thankful. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. where do you see, like, where do you see your work going? What do you want to do in the future that you haven't done yet? That's a good question. I, 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 I think I just want to get go deeper with what I'm doing. I, I almost said get better, but I just want to go deeper with it. Um, and maybe that means it gets better or maybe that means it gets worse because everyone's a <laughs> critic now. So it just doesn't, yeah. but I, I, I want to keep writing the things that I think my future self needs to hear and my past self needs to hear as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to write something that people can nod their nod along to, but not in like a, um, not like in the way that you nod at like a t-ball game. Like, you know, like, <laughs> but like, I don't like, know I, that. Like I don't know it. if I know that nod. <laughs> yeah. You know what? As soon as I said that, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but like, you know, like, I don't know. Like I want people to nod, nod along to it because they feel it. Not yeah. because it's just like everyone else is in the stands too. Yeah. Like it means something to them. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to write uh, a memoir. I want to write kids books. Mm. I want to make more jokes. I want to, I don't know. I just, I just want to create things. But the, the big thing that I want to do is I want to invite other people to, to start creating as well. Like I, I, I don't want people to look at what I'm doing and say, well, I'm glad someone's doing it. I want them to say, I can do that too. But more importantly, like I can do that better. Um, mm. I, I, I never, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize that poetry was a thing until I was like 20 years old. Uh, and so I love going to, to schools and, and talking about poetry and writing, because I think that if kids see writers and poets from a young age, they might think about doing it too. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That, um, yeah, I mean, I'm come from like a creative background. My husband's, you know, in the creative field and he's like one of the most collaborative people I know. He's so good at kind of 
doing what you're talking about, like encouraging. And so hearing, hearing other people say that is always, um, so exciting to me because it makes, I feel like collaboration makes, uh, your own work better. And that's not the reason to do it ever, but yeah. that's, I think the misconception when you think like, oh, I need to hoard this all for myself and not like yeah. help other people. You think that that will make you better. And it's a total lie. Um, cause it, yeah it will make everything, it makes your work better. It makes other people's work better. It's just a better way to operate in my opinion, but I don't know. That's yeah. just my and it's, opinion. it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to be like, Hey, do you want to, it's, it's hard to ask for help and it's hard yeah. to say, Hey, can you, can you join me in this thing that is really special to me? Mm. Um, I don't know. It's easy to, it's easy to, to, to think that you have control over something that you don't have control over. Yeah. So like just if you, but if you treat the creativity as a gift, then the more hands that you can get on the gift is a better thing. Oh, the right hands yeah. is a better thing. Yeah, for sure. What do you mm -hmm. see? How do you see, like, this is maybe a little bit of a tangent, but I think it's somewhat on track with what we're talking about. What you're doing is, um, is, is so great. You're, you're a Christian. Uh, you, <laughs> you, we've talked a little bit about like how you're kind of, you know, you're not in the ministry of the church, but you are like giving this message mm -hmm. of what the church hopefully is, is giving. How do you see creativity playing a role in the church? Where's, where's the need for that? And, um, where have you maybe like learned, like this could be better? Um, and where have you seen creativity really like flourish and do a lot of good things in the church? That's a lot of questions in one, but <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about creativity in the church. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I think that, well, I mean, we all know that creativity certainly has a place in the church. Uh, and I think it's been difficult to figure out, okay, well then how can they, how can they work together? Because I think we, we don't, we want to highlight what G, who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. And I don't think we want, we don't want the show to be about the things that we have done or the things that, you know, the, about us. I want to keep the focus on Jesus, but how can we use the gifts of the church to encourage the church? And I think that's, that's what I, that's what I care about is I want to, I want to create something for the church that invites other people to I don't know, to know hope in a different kind of way. Like poetry, yeah. it's not a, it's not a worship song. It's not a sermon, but I think it lives somewhere in between. And there's a lot of people in the pews on Sunday morning who connect with the music, who connect with the message. But then there's some people who are just like, what are we doing here? Like we need, <laughs> I need something. I need, I, I think I'm trying to get it, but like there's somebody sitting there who I think would connect with poetry. And so I kind of see that I see the, the church and creatives just kind of, I just want, I want to see it kind of go a little bit deeper um, yeah. in a little bit more ways. I, I, somebody told me that like, you know, way back when that like churches basically funded the arts, like they mm. were like, you know, very, yeah. very into like, you know, helping poets be successful. So if there's any churches that are listening and want to support a poet, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, how can we, how can we get behind these people who were, who were also creating, um, creating things for, for the church, for the Christian, uh, for, for walking with the Lord? Um, how can we join them in what they're doing and how can we do this together? Um, so it's like, yeah. how do we kind of, how do we pull up more chairs to the table and say, let's create something beautiful and give that away freely? Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. And that's, and that kind of goes back to the whole collaboration thing is, you yeah. know, can the local church, like what, you know, who's sitting in your pews? Like, what are they good at? Uh, you know, when I've, when I've, when I've worked at churches, I've had opportunities to share poetry. And then the churches that I belong to as a member, it's often, Hey, can we, can you write something for this Sunday? Can you mm. do this? I'm like, yes. So. That's yeah, awesome. There's definitely, I'm glad to hear there's definitely a that's way, been your experience. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also, it also takes something from the person sitting in the pew to say, here's what I have to offer. Right. That's but very true. You don't, you don't have to do something with it because everyone, you know, it's like, I don't want to weigh, weigh the church down with, you know, here's everything that we can do because we want, the one thing that we should be just, is just like, Hey, just love your neighbor. Like that's what we mm. want you to do also. So yeah, I don't know. Can the gift, but then can the gifts that you have also help love your neighbor? And the answer is, is yes. Now how? Yeah. Yes. And it doesn't have to be big or crazy or no. um, super difficult. It can be 
as simple as mm -hmm. doing what you normally do day to day. So, yep. yeah. Yep. And I think one, I mean, one other thing we've kind of just been dancing around that I think is important to say is like the idea of, to me, the idea of creativity in the church is not to get us like somewhere bigger and better and further out, but to draw us back into that mm -hmm. central message and to say it again um, in a new way. Like that's what you're, yeah. that's what you're doing. That's what we've talked about um, mm -hmm. 1517 and places like Mockingbird doing. We're just, we're, we're hopefully getting people back to that, back to Christ. We're, we're just doing yeah. it in, in different ways. Um, I think we could even say, new ways in the sense that it's a way that a new way that's going to hit someone for the first time. Yeah. And it's, again, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a show. It's not a come look at, at us or come look at me. It's a, um, Hey, just, just, just come closer for, for a minute. I want to share this with you. Yeah. All right. Now, now let's go live out the hope that we know so, so well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And then when it comes, I don't know, for me, and you probably feel the same way. Like I can't help but do this. Like I yeah. have to write. Like I, I and, and I know that there's somebody who's like, well, I just have to bake or I have to do this. Like I have to plant a garden. Like, mm -hmm. I think we can, you know, that's, that's what it's like, you know, talking about like vocation, talking about like gifts, like take those gifts and then live them out and mm -hmm. then invite other people to them. Um, yeah. And hopefully, yeah. I, and hope, and, and I haven't been, I haven't been good at that. Like at the beginning of my career, I was just trying to figure everything out. And now I feel like I've gotten to a place where I'm like, oh, this is not about you at all. Hmm. It's just your name. Now, just like, how can you give all this stuff away? Like, yeah. yes, you have to be able to, you have to be able to eat and like make a living out of this. But like, what can you give away? What can you do um, for other people, for your neighbor? Um, yeah. With the gifts that you have. And that's kind of what I've been thinking about recently. Yeah. I love that. I think that's great. Even though you said that though, um, as we're wrapping up, where can people oh, yeah. find your work? <laughs> where can yes. people go to, to see what you're creating and kind of, um, keep up with what you're doing? Yeah. If you go to written to you can find everything there. I mean, I have books, I've got a blog, I've got videos and Instagram and Facebook. I post on Instagram and Facebook pretty much, pretty much daily. So if you're looking for little bits of hope or stories uh, or videos, like it's, it's all there. And yeah. And then if you're, uh, if you're looking to host events for poetry uh, yeah. or music and poetry, like, let me know. I'd love to come share poetry in your community. And the, the evenings are fun. I've been touring with uh 1517 member Blake Flatley. So we, do evenings of poetry and music, and it is always the best. It's it's like a, a night of rest, a night of hope. It's music, it's poetry, it's storytelling. There's laughing. If you're a crier, you'll probably cry a little bit. If you're not a crier, you'll be fine. You know, so it's just <laughs> it's just it's just it's just it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, yeah, written written to speak .com is where you can find me. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tanner. I've loved thank you uh, getting to chat today and. Um, Excited, hopefully, to see you. I don't know when, but sometime soon. Hopefully soon. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Tanner. If you enjoyed today's show, as always, I encourage you to subscribe to Outside Ourselves wherever you're listening or watching. That includes YouTube or to leave us a review, whether that's just written or, you know, the five stars. That's a really easy and quick way to share Outside Ourselves content with others and to make sure that, um, it gets seen by those who have not seen it yet. We'll see you back here in a couple of weeks.